When Carl Edwards burst onto the scene in 2005 with four Nextel Cup wins and a third overall points finish, expectations were that he would win big and win often. But 19 months passed without a single victory. Could he snap that skid at Michigan? Hi, and welcome to the BF Goodridge NASCAR Report. I'm Amber Wilson for CBS Sportsline. On Sunday, Edwards crossed the finish line for the first time since the Dickies 500 on November 6th of 2005. That's 52 races Edwards would wait to pull into victory lane again, but recently it started to look like he was on the right track. After spending most of the season finishing around the back of the top 15, in his last five races, he finished in the top five three times, including overcoming less than impressive qualifying positions of 32nd and 39th. He finished third at the Autism Speaks 400 and fifth at the Dodge Avenger 500, so he was close, oh so close, and Michigan International Speedway proved to be just the place Sunday for Edwards. After starting 12th, overcoming a speeding penalty and holding off Martin Truex Jr. in the closing moment of the race, Carl Edwards took the checkered flag, broke out the backflip once again, and broke the 2007 dominance of Chevrolet. To this point, Chevy crushed the competition, winning 13 of 14 races this season, including the last 12 in a row. But Michigan International Speedway continues to be the only glaring weakness, as the Chevy hasn't won at Michigan in 11 races dating back to 2001. Maybe it's the two-mile D-shaped oval or the fact that the track runs wide open and you need a lot of downforce to win. Whatever the reason, Michigan's not kind to Chevy drivers. This year, Edwards takes the flag for Ford. Last year, it was Matt Kenseth and Casey Kane topping a streak of other Ford and Dodge drivers. The last Chevy driver to win at the Michigan International Speedway was Jeff Gordon at the Kmart 400 six years ago. So Sunday, Jack Roush's team notched its second win of the season as Carl Edwards moves up to sixth in the overall standings. Martin Truex Jr. continues to race well, and it shows with the DEI driver reaching the top 10. Tony Stewart is sitting at seventh overall after finishing third this past weekend. The two-time Nextel Cup champion has yet to reach victory lane this season. Dale Jr. finds himself back in the coveted top 12 after a fifth place finish. Outgoing Hendrick driver Kyle Busch finished sixth. Defending series champion Jimmy Johnson had been running third, but Ray Gas several laps from the finish line and wound up 19th. And Jeff Gordon is still the overall points leader after finishing ninth. But with his pregnant wife due to deliver, he might not be in the 24 car this weekend. He's 264 points ahead of Denny Hamlin. And with that, we bring in our own NASCAR expert, Pete Pistoni, who's vacationing in Orlando with the family this week, but his mind's never too far from the racetrack. All right, Pete, the showing by DEI last week at Michigan with Truex Jr. finishing second and Paul Menard finishing 12th, in addition to Dale Earnhardt Jr. finishing fifth, seems to say that despite Dale Jr. leaving, the team's going to be capable of staying competitive. What do other drivers and teams think about DEI in the post-junior era? Well, Amber, you take a few days off, but you're never too far away from the world of NASCAR. You know, DEI, I think, has made a statement here in the last few weeks with Martin Truex Jr. winning at Dover, running so well, coming home second at Michigan, Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming home fifth, and even Paul Menard coming home twelfth. I think a lot of drivers in that garage area who are looking for a place to be next year might be looking at DEI. So Teresa Earnhardt certainly has her finger on things right now, and I don't think it's uh, such a bad destination after all. All right, and Kyle Busch has now replaced Earnhardt Jr. as the hottest free agent in NASCAR. What teams are on the hunt for his services? Well, Kyle Busch has kind of switched roles with Dale Earnhardt Jr. A week ago, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was the most sought-after free agent in the garage area. Now it's Kyle Busch, and we talked to about five or six car owners in Michigan over the weekend who said they'd like to talk to Kyle Busch. Robert Yates, uh, Joe Gibbs Racing, possibly, Everham Motorsports. I think he's going to wind up with a good team, and I think... In Kyle's uh, uh, help, it would be to have that situation put the rest in the next three or four weeks, and I think it's going to happen probably by August 1st. All right, Pete, and Infineon Raceway is this weekend, the first of two road courses on the Cup schedule. It will be the first road race for the car tomorrow. How will that play out, and who should we look to do well in Sunday's Toyota Save Mart 350? Well, the car tomorrow will be making its road course debut. Uh, it's going to be tough because that car has a handling problem. Every driver that doesn't like it so far in the first races that it's been in has said it's a tough car to handle. Now you're putting it on a road course. So you got to turn left, you got to turn right, you have elevation. I think it's going to be tough to manhandle, but it should be a lot of fun to watch, you know. And But I think whenever you go road course racing, you look for the same guys. Jeff Gordon, if he's there, because if his wife has a baby this weekend, Jeff Gordon won't be in Sonoma. But if he's there, I think he'll be the guy to watch. I also think Tony Stewart, who's making his 300th career career start in Nextel Cup this week and has five road course wins. I think he'll be tough. And Kurt Busch in the Miller Lite Dodge, that car was always so good on road courses when Rusty Wallace drove it. I think Kurt Busch will be someone to watch come Sunday out in Napa Valley. All right. Thanks as always, Pete. We look forward to hearing from you this weekend from Infineon. 
And don't forget to check us out next week when we look ahead to New Hampshire. But if you missed anything here today, stop, refresh, and rewatch for the BF Goodrich NASCAR Report. I'm Amber Wilson.